Hello everyone, this is Patrick and you'll know me as Dwiggy out on the links. I'm here today to walk you through an exciting new update to our slider tool. For those of you who've used the current version, this sheet should look very familiar to you. This is a great way to get slider percentages when you're either moving up from minimum position or down from maximum position based on a certain number of rings to identify the slider percentage that you need. Likewise, we have another cool chart that helps you identify slider percentages when you're moving when you're in a plus yardage situation which happens when your ball power is one or greater. So while it's great that you can get these slider percentages, the downside is once you have it, you have to go back into Notebook or Caddy, enter the slider percentage into the tool, identify the rings that you need to move in Golf Clash, go into Golf Clash, move those rings, and hopefully take your shot before you run out of time. There has to be a better way to do this, right? Well, let me introduce you to the Golf Clash Ring Bible. I've combined the best features of the slider and plus yardage tools and added the power of notebook or caddy to it as well. You can now have everything you need in one place to determine your adjustments. For those of you that haven't used the tool, don't worry as I'll walk you through everything you need to know to use this sheet successfully. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do, like notebook or caddy, is you need to set up your bags. In this tool, you can set up to seven different bags. So what I'll do is I'll start with the first one and I'll go ahead and give it a name. And let's go ahead and name the second one. The next thing you need to do is actually the, is choose the clubs that you wanna use. So I'm going to choose Thor's Hammer 6. We'll go with Sniper 10, Grizzly 8, et cetera, et cetera. Once you've completed setting up your bags, the next step you need to do is actually choose the bag that you plan to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose Dwiggy 1. Up here, you will see links to the common sheets that you'll be using in this workbook. There are other sheets that you can use as well, but these are links to the most common ones. Now that we've set up our bag, let's look at the first sheet, which is the ring calculator. The ring calculator is basically a replication of notebook or caddy. In the first section, we will enter our variables, which is the ball power, elevation, slider percentage, and wind. For ball power, we can either use the drop down list to choose a power, or we can just type it in. Same thing for elevation. I can choose an elevation from negative 50% to 125%, or I can type it in. The slider doesn't have a drop down list, so you just type in the percentage that you're interested in seeing. And last but not least, we have the wind. The second section is selecting your club. You can select a club simply by clicking on the name, and then you'll notice that the colors change green to make it easier to see um, variables that you're looking for. The next section is the actual ring values. And here you will see very much like notebook or caddy, maximum ring values, the ring values based on the slider percentage that was entered here, and your minimum ring values. In this section, this gives you the power slice numbers for each club, whether or not you're using full OP or no OP. This particular overview, I'm not gonna go into exactly how to do slicing, but this tool gives you the numbers to help you um, if you're familiar or comfortable with doing power slices. This last section is basically the slider chart. And so what this does is it gives you the ring value for each slider percentage. So for example, if I change the slider percentage to be 18% and I'm on my sniper, you'll see here that I should pull 11.58 rings, which rounds to 11.6. If I look down here to 18%, you'll see the same value. So this is a list of all slider percentages from zero to 100%. And you can sort this list either ascending or descending. Okay, let's talk about the next sheet in this workbook, which is the single club chart. And right next to it, you'll also see the generic club chart, which I'll talk about as well. What's great about this particular sheet, and what I believe is the most powerful sheet in this workbook, is that it gives you everything you need to know for a given club in your bag. So let's go through this. Much like we had on the ring calculator, you enter in your variables, the ball power, elevation, slider, and wind. And also like ring calculator, you can choose the drop down list and pick a value, or you can manually type in the value. Same thing with elevation, same thing with your slider, 
and same thing with wind. This next section is your ring values. So very much like notebook or caddy, this will tell you exactly the maximum rings, the minimum rings, and the slider rings, which is based on the slider value entered here. So it's at 50% right now, which represents basically 12 rings. I can change that to 25%, which means I need to pull 10.96, which is really um, 11 rings. I can choose particular clubs in my bag. It's currently set to Grizzly 8. I can change it to Thor's Hammer 6, Sniper, or any other club that happens to be in my bag. Over here, we'll have those same slice with overpower or slice with no overpower values that we had on the ring calculator. But now what we have is the min-max slider chart and the plus yardage chart. So why are these better than what our original version had? Remember, our original version only had the slider percentages. So if I were using my Grizzly and I were moving, pushing up from absolute minimum position 10 rings, this tells me I have a slider value of 14% to use. But more importantly, it tells me that once I've moved up 10 rings from absolute min, I need to do a 10 and a half ring adjustment from that point. So I don't have to go back into notebook or caddy to find that ring value. It's automatically here for me. Likewise, let's say I was adjusting from maximum position and I was dropping down, let's say six rings from maximum position. The old tool would stop at just telling me that's 89%. This tool tells me that's 13.6 rings I need to adjust from that particular position. Same thing with the plus yardages. So here I've got, let's say I was setting up and I happen to be at plus four. The old tool would just tell me that's 90%. The new tool tells me, okay, I've got to adjust 13.6 rings from that particular spot. This combines the power of notebook and caddy with the old slider tool to give you everything you need to do your adjustments in one quick view. Now I mentioned I was going to talk about the generic club chart. So this particular sheet ties into your bag setup. So whatever we set up on the bag setup here and the bag that we chose is what will appear here. The generic club chart allows you to choose any club regardless of whether or not you set it up in your bag. So same variables that we have to set up. You've got your same min max slider values. Uh, I moved this over here a little bit to get it out of the way, but basically I have my same overpower adjustments and I still have my same min max slider chart and plus yardage chart. The only difference is now I can choose whatever club I want to. So let's say I'm interested in seeing a short iron. It looks ugly till you choose the short iron. So let's say I'm interested in looking at uh, Thorn 9. And now here is everything I want to see about Thorn 9 for a ball power 3, 10% elevation with 12 and a half mile per hour win. So again, this will let me choose any club in Golf Clash, whereas the single club chart will let me choose the clubs that are in my bag. Why I like this is, for sake of argument, let's say you hit your drive and in tour play you thought you were set up to use your long iron next, but as soon as it was your turn, you realized your drive was a little farther than you thought, so it wound up being at a short iron. Well, I can quickly choose Falcon 5, and now everything for my short iron is ready for me to use. Let's talk about the enhanced min max slider sheet next. Okay, so where the single club chart gave you all sorts of information for a single club, the min-max slider, the plus yardage slider, as well as a replication of the notebook or caddy tool. This one focuses on giving you basically the min-max slider chart, but it gives it to you for every single club in your bag. So what would we do? Similarly to what we did on the single club chart, we'd enter in our ball power, our elevation, and our wind. And why this one is enhanced is because it gives you the ring values based on these variables that were entered. <clears throat> so for example, if we looked at the Grizzly 8, and let's say we pushed up eight rings from absolute minimum position, that represents a slider percentage of 11%, and where the original min-max tool would stop there, we've now enhanced it to tell you exactly what the ring count is for pushing up eight rings from minimum, which is 10.39, or it rounds to 10.4 rings. Likewise, let's say we pushed down from absolute maximum position 12 rings, 
Well, that would be a slider percentage of 79%, which represents 13.17, which rounds to 13.2 ring adjustment that we would do. So again, this gives you every single sheet in your bag for the min max slider chart. When Golf Clash introduced the Ryder Cup, they came up with a new concept of adding what were called fixed clubs. Knowing that we're now having to deal with fixed clubs and there's a possibility that Golf Clash could add new clubs in the future, we decided to add one more feature to this um, workbook to deal with that. And so while I don't have a link to it, you can find that sheet here, which is called the Ad Hoc Club Creator. What this sheet allows you to do is, let's say Golf Clash creates a new driver um, with new variables that we now need to deal with. You can simply enter that value here, and then whatever you enter here will appear as in a dropdown on your bag setup. So for example, let's say we have an ad hoc driver. I'm gonna call it the ad hoc master driver to replicate the master driver, master fixed driver that we had in the Ryder Cup. It has a max distance of 230 yards and it has 40 accuracy. So you can type these values in, but they're already in here for you. When I now come back to my bag setup, I will see that driver listed. And by choosing it here, you'll see that it's available for me. And all of the associated values would be related for that driver simply by entering in the distance and the accuracy. We can do everything else for you. Another sheet that I've added to this workbook is the bankroll management calc. I don't have a quick link to it, but you can get to it by um, selecting the sheet down here. I've heard a lot of advice being given on how many coins you should have went to advance to another tour level. I've heard 10 times entry fee, I've heard 30 times entry fee, but that really isn't good advice. The best way to determine if you have enough coins is imagine if you were to lose all of your trophies. If you have coins left over, that means you have a surplus and you're in good shape to move up to the next level. If you would actually lose all of your coins by losing all your trophies, then you're effectively in debt and you're not really ready to move up. Up here, you will see an article that I linked to that does a fantastic breakdown of the best way to determine um, if you have enough coins to move up to the next level. I've also built a chart to simplify that. So all you have to do is enter the values, enter your trophies that you currently have, and this sheet will calculate for you the minimum number of coins you need for your trophy count. So as an example, let's say you've maxed out your trophies for tours one through eight, and you're asking, am I ready to move up to tour nine by entering in these values? You'll see that I should have at least 16.348 million coins. So if I have less than that, you're not really ready to move up. If you have more than that, then you have a surplus and you're good to go. And as you continue adding coins, so let's say I'm on tour nine and I add 50 more trophies here, I can simply enter that in and that'll tell me how many coins I now need to have based on my newest trophy, co trophy count. So this is a much safer or effective way to evaluate the coins that you need to move up tour levels. Let's watch the Golf Clash Ring Bible in action, and we're going to use the single club chart sheet for this. So here you'll see a, a given um, shot that I have set up here, and let's go ahead and advance this a little bit. And so here you'll see his shot. He's using a Grizzly 8 in absolute minimum position. We've got a 10.8 wind, a three ball power, and this particular elevation is 10%. Let's go ahead and enter that into our sheet. So we have a three ball power, 10% elevation, which is already there, and the 10.8 wind. What he's gonna do is he's gonna push up from min. So notice he's in min position because it was just before um, the club switch from thorn to grizzly. And now we're gonna count rings from there. What's nice is he has a grid overlay. So it becomes very easy to count. Let me rewind that a little bit so you can see that. Here, we're in min position. That red line is right at the top of his shot circle. Pushed it up. There's our 10 rings. From there to there, equal 10 rings. 
So when I look at 10 rings on this chart, 10 rings tells me I've got a 14% slider, but more importantly, I have 9.86 rings to move. That rounds up to 9.9. .9. I like the two decimals because it tells me it's somewhere between 9.8 and 9.9. .9. So let's finish watching this shot. Here he sets up for the hole, tame to the hole. We're now going to watch him adjust. And there we have it. He's adjusted between 9.8 and 9.9 .9 rings. Finishing the shot. He hits perfect, which is so critical to do. And lo and behold, the shot goes in. This is one example, and I'll show a couple more examples as well. Let's watch another example where we're pulling down from max. So in this particular shot, we're using a Grizzly 7, and notice we're in max position. A couple other things to note is we have a 9.4 wind, a one ball power, and the particular elevation that was used here was 0%. So I'm good, like I did the last time, I'm gonna enter 9.4 wind. We're gonna do one ball power and 0% elevation. And he was using a Grizzly 7, so I've got a Grizzly 7 set up here. Let's keep moving on and see what happens. Let me rewind a little bit so we can catch the ring moving. Okay, so he's set in max position and notice how he set his, um, his grid overlay so we can count our rings. So the first movement, there's 10 rings that he moved. There's another 10 rings. And he went a little bit past, that's about 21 rings that he moved. So 21 rings, so let's go through this. 21 rings, if I look on this chart, 21 rings based on 9.4 win, one ball power, he moved from max, so that is a 64% slider, or more importantly, that's 8.98, which rounds to basically nine ring adjustment. So let's go through and see what he gets here. He's setting his spins to the hole. And now he's entering his slider. So here we can actually see notebook and compare it to our new tool. Let me back that up just a tick. So here we go. He used 64% slider, 21 rings. Look at that, 64% slider. It calculated nine rings. Look at that, 8.98, which equals nine rings. Isn't that nice? With one shot, I don't have to put these values into notebook because I already have the number of rings I need to move. So let's go ahead and keep moving and watch the shot. There's his nine rings. We take our shot, hopefully we hit perfect. We did, and we make our shot. So here's another example of the, the new um, Golf Clash Ring Bible in action. Let's watch one more example where we're pushing down from max position. So here we have a Falcon 4 set up in max position. And notice we have a ball power 3, 8.1 wind. And for this particular shot, it's 30% elevation. So let's put in our 8.1 wind. Let's put in our ball power 3. And we're going to use 30% elevation. The club was a Falcon 4, which I already have set up. So continuing through from max position, let's see how, how many rings we move. So right off the bat, we moved eight rings. Let me back that up so you can see that again. So here, again, based on our uh, grid overlay, he's starting here at the end of the white. So if I count each of these rings to the blue would be eight rings. Okay, we're at eight rings. And now he's setting up his shot. What you'll notice in this chart is that he wasn't particularly happy with where he was based on the backspin that he wanted to add. So now what you'll see is he's gonna push up. So he's originally pulled back eight rings and he's gonna push up two. Let me do that again so you can see that. So here he's in the middle of his shot circle. 
So to the yellow would be one ring, to the red would be one more. So if I push up two, so if I push up two, what that means is I have a net of, of six rings from max because I started with eight and then I pushed up two. So six rings from max means it's 90% or 5.89 rings, which equals 5.9. Lo and behold, when we look at what he actually entered into notebook, he did 88%, which was close enough, calculating 5.9 rings, which ties to my 5.9 rings. Let's watch his pull. So he's starting at the blue, so that'd be one, two, three, four, five point nine. So he should end just before the blue finishes on this side. And he does. We take our shot. Center cup. This concludes the tutorial of our new Golf Clash Ring Bible. I hope you're as excited as I am to use this new tool, and I wish you the best out on the links. Good luck, everybody.